yet. Talk to me about your writing process. What is your actual writing process together? Obviously, you love each other. You get along very well. Are you in a room together? Are you trading back and forth? What is that like? This one's so unique because we were not together in a room. I think since we're friends and we've known each other a long time, that was not even an issue. It was during the pandemic. And we didn't realize, we were so done with the script and ready to make the movie when we finally sat down. Totally. You were in Austin that time. We, and we haven't actually been together and here we are ready to proceed on the movie. So yeah, it's easy these days, you know. Yeah, we had You a, can we had share a, a script online, it's so easy. It was like mostly on the phone. We'd be on the phone yeah. and then on Final Draft Collaborate. And it was like, you know, he'd take a section, I'd take a section, we'd kind of pass it back and forth stuff, and then yeah. kind of go through the script together. It was. It was really, it was really yeah. an effortless process. I, I will say most of it, like the conversation we were just having about um, yeah. the lifespan and things like that, my favorite part about writing with Rick is that it never feels like writing. It feels like <laughs> we'll have like a conversation. My favorite part about writing with you is that we will start off and we'll literally have a conversation like that. You're like, you know, octopuses live only one year. And like, you know, well, what, if, what if I were like a Malaysian box turtle? You know, maybe if I was just, and we, we'd go off on this thing and it would slowly lead us back towards oh, our movie. I think all we're the time. in the arena. I never yeah. think I've digressed out of work. No. It's, it's, you're always kind of pulling things in because you never know when something can infuse, find its way into what we're doing. I love that. So it sounds digressive, but we laugh a lot too. We make each other laugh. So that's where a lot of the, Obviously, the humor in the movie, but you know, it's like we we feel free to throw out kind of crazy ideas. Well, what if that? It's like, can you do that? Have I ever seen that before? Can we do that? Like, why not? Yeah, we're we're pushing each other to keep going. You know, it's amazing that you are able to have that freedom because this is based on a true story. At what point are you like, okay, we have we've got the bones of what really happened, and now we really want to make it our own thing. Well, in this case, we had the best of both worlds. We had a great character, great situation, great like lifestyle, great setup. But that ends up being less than half our movie, really. I don't yeah. know what percentage, but at some point we just take this huge flight of fancy, you know, within the relationship. You know, that magazine article ends when he lets her off. We had the idea of like, what if she called him back? What if she thanked him for saving her life? What if she asked him to something? And then it became, it was like, then he's trapped. He's trapped in the identity. That's when it becomes this study of identity and kind of kind of a body switch comedy for Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I really loved about the film is that you see this wonderful romance that is also extremely sexy and you guys have some great love scenes and there's been a sort of conversation lately about, you know, certain younger generations aren't as into sex scenes, but when you see it in this, when it really advances their relationship and it makes sense that they would be really into each other, it's like, yeah, no, this makes sense. So can you talk to me about building, like writing those and Glenn actually doing them? Well, I think also like, you know, one of the big parts with, with Gary is that that part is completely absent from his life. He's living completely in his head. You know, he's, yeah. he's completely binary in, in terms of logic and right. And we, a lot of the big exploration of what we were trying to play with in here is a guy who slowly but surely turns off the logic part of his brain and gives into humanity and passion and checks that logic at the door, which will eventually bite him in the ass in, <laughs> in a way. But 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 that's that's with the passion essence of being, becomes yeah, danger. Yeah, you, there's a there's a <laughs> you're going to fall in passion. You don't know where it's going to take you. But well, and and that's the fun part is as we kind of talked about is always like you know it's never one or the other. It's turning Gary up or Ron down or you know vice versa, and. I think what's really interesting about those scenes are they are, they're not there to just say, oh, now they're a couple. That's the the exploration of Gary not being in his head and and by putting on this other identity, by putting the mask of another human on, he's actually better at this thing that, <laughs> than he thought he would be, which is sort of the essence of him embracing Ron. You know, that's sort of the launching point of a lot of uh, him, it's really that sex scene is him falling in love with Ron. You know, <laughs> thinking like, you know I, I mean? like this guy. Yeah, yeah. And to the first part of your question, yeah, for the last couple of years, there's been a lot of thought and like, oh, sex in movies is it gone? People that were uncomfortable, people. I'm like, my God, that's the only reason I went to movies as a young person <laughs> was hoping to see a sex scene. So I don't know. Well, I also found that you know what was interesting about that is we also, Audrey, uh, I thought the process of how we found that sex scene. 
or, and you know the sex scenes in the movies. Remember, we yeah. found these like kind of impressionistic. Like we found pieces of art. Like you'd go, there's like an old painting or like an old photograph, yeah. and we'd kind of like go, "What about this? Do we like? What about this?" And Audrey was really, I would say that because as much as it is fantasy for Gary, it's as much a fantasy for her. And you oh, really yeah. have to have the the female gaze on that sex scene. And so what I thought was really interesting is we kind of team sported it and really right. kind of showed images and things like that that we got excited about. Um, things that you've never seen before. Because that was the other thing is sex scenes can be sort of paint by numbers and so boring and so ineffective, you know. It was definitely a challenge, but. Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah, fun. It, I mean, it looks fun on screen. Is it, it's not typical fun. It feels, it's, sure. it's edgy because, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think. It's a weird day as an actor, sure, As yeah. an actor, you can answer that better <laughs> than me. But it's a little fraught. I think because yeah. people are very, very sensitive to others. You know, like you don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. You don't want to do anything wrong. But we just, you know, Audrey is such a gamer. You know, she's That's just so such a trooper. And I think she sets the tone there. If, if the it's kind of set up for the exploitation has always been against the young women. So if she's fine, we're fine. You know? Well, also you, we do a, Rick, Rick's process is a lot of rehearsal. We talk out everything. There, there are no questions when you get to game day. And that's the thing that I think also mm -hmm. makes actors feel safe in those scenes. I think a lot of times they, you know, I think the hard part about those scenes is a lot of it's down to legal writers, right? What are you comfortable with a month before you start shooting? And then what does it actually right. feel like on the day? And I think we were constantly talking about it. So it was kind of, the mystery yeah. was taken out of it in a yeah, great I way. Think that, you know what I mean? And I think looking through the history of our industry and people's problems, it's always like, what you know they hear at the last minute hey we've decided it's yeah. new information it's like thrown off it's just not disclosure so we're the opposite of that we talked it through by the time we were shooting it a lot of many many weeks of thought and it has gone into it so yeah. so you guys have been lucky enough to take the film to venice toronto new york now you're at sundance and you've had people react like I've, I've been in I was at New York Film Festival. People have such a great time with this. And now the film is also going to be on Netflix. What are your hopes and expectations for people just watching it at home without a big group? Well, as a filmmaker, it's always fun to see it with a big audience, especially this. You know, it's a comedy. There's, the humor you know, exists in a lot of different ways. So it's fun to see people respond, you know, as a group. But that's, you know, it works really well privately, too. So I'm. Either way, I don't, yeah. I don't, you know. I, I still haven't seen this movie with an audience. The, the most I've seen it with is a yeah. few friends at my house just to get some ideas and thoughts. And um, it, it really, it works in audiences of all sizes, but uh, based on what I've been hearing, it sounds like a big audience is a really fun place to watch <laughs> yeah, this. You know, so anything that's a comedy, bigger yeah. the better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what are you guys cooking up next together? It seems like this is going to keep going. I this know, bond. That's funny. The, the, now that we've worked together numerous times, it, it does beg the question, doesn't it? Yeah. So we've been we've been throwing we've been mm. throwing things back and forth. I think we're we're um, yeah. we'll find Who it. Knows? I think I think we're really looking if anybody Who has, uh, you know, a book <laughs> or an article that's set in Greece or Italy, <laughs> you know, maybe something like that. Hey, you know, as much as I love New Orleans, I've I mean, always wanted to make like a airplane action film. So oh, yeah. can you get me on. Talk to Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, a, I'm I, available. I think this is. Maybe I can if there's a, just no, 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 I'll, I'll put in a good word for sure. Okay, but good, because that's one way. <laughs> well, Rick, you mentioning Tom is funny because there's like sort of a Top Gun Maverick reunion at Sundance this year. Danny was literally just here. Jay has a movie here. So, Glenn, what's it like seeing all these guys on the rise after such a fantastic film you guys made together? I know, right? Uh, these guys, I mean, I don't go very long without seeing any of these guys. Um, we had dinner together last night. Uh, so, I mean... There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of love with that cast. We spent a lot of time together on a lot of military bases all over all over the United States um, and on a carrier, you know, off the 600 miles off the coast of Mexico, which is the best way to get to know someone and and all Live of their habits. The yeah, yeah, that's like that's like expedited For months friendship. And months yeah, and, yeah. But um, no, I mean the the best part is is I think with Top Gun the the success of that movie really exploded so many people's careers. It really changed a lot of our lives. And so to see where Danny's going, to see where Jay's going, to see where Monica and Lewis and, you know, Tarzan and everybody's going, it's just, it's it's been pretty, um, it's been pretty fun to be a part of and to kind of feel that that was a launching pad for a lot of us. Yeah.